friends, welcome back to Alaskan Homemaker. I'm Mary. Today we're gonna to make a hearty beef stew. So let's get started. First, we're gonna cut up some potatoes. The recipe calls for one pound of potatoes. To be honest, I just guess how many I like to, whatever looks good on the veggies. And these are organic potatoes from Azure Standard. So I'm keeping the skin. and I'm just gonna cut my veggies up and get them into a bowl. I used about six potatoes. It calls for three carrots. I bought some carrots from Azure Standard. Then these are number two carrots that aren't perfect, like, you know, they're chopped or they have a crack in them or something, but they still are really wonderful carrots. So, and I've got four of these because they're kind of in pieces. I do have some homegrown carrots still in my crisper drawer, but I'm saving those for fresh eating because the bolero carrots are really sweet. We love those bolero carrots. So I'm saving those for fresh eating and I'm just gonna use these Azure carrots for cooking. So you can cube up your vegetables in the size that you prefer. We like our veggies kind of on the small side and our meat, so that's how I'm gonna cut ours. I already peeled and washed these carrots. Now we're gonna get an onion chopped. This is my garlic from my garden. I puree a bunch of garlic at one time and then I freeze it so I can just chop off a piece when I need it. Okay, so we'll get that into our bowl. Okay, now we're gonna start chopping up our meat. So I'm going to get some whole wheat flour. You can use whatever flour that you wanna use. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of flour, but I always use more flour than that. I kinda do what looks good on this too. Probably going to use three fourths of a cup of flour. And the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of salt, paprika, and pepper. But I'm going, well, I probably will use a half a teaspoon. So this is one teaspoon, and I'm just not filling it up all the way. So that was salt, pepper, and now we're gonna get a half a teaspoon of paprika. And we're gonna mix this up. And now we're gonna start chopping up our stew meat. And the recipe calls for a three pound, three pounds of stew meat. And our family likes our meat even even our meat chopped up into small bits, pieces, not big hunks of stew meat. So I'm gonna chop this up. And we're gonna start warming up our pot. I'm going to put it on a four, so like a, a medium low heat, a little bit above medium low. So right under medium. And it calls for three tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm just gonna eyeball that. And just put as much oil as you're frying. If you need more oil, just go ahead and put some more. And I've got a couple, like two and a half tablespoons of butter right here. The recipe calls for three, but this is close enough. So I'm gonna get that butter in there. So that can start heating up. 
I used to skip the step of, you know, browning the meat and everything on recipes, but it adds a lot of wonderful flavor. So I always like to do that step. The Maillard reaction is like free flavor. And the Maillard reaction is the browning of the meat. And it just makes it really extra good, whatever dish you're making. So I like to not skip that step anymore. And so I'm just chopping them into little cubes and then I'm just gonna drop them into that flour. If I have a whole bunch extra, I'll put them into that bowl. And I'm gonna cut off any really hard bits of fat that I know is going to be good. I like to cook the beef stew early and let it simmer all day. It smells so good. And it's such a great dish for the winter time. This is the my favorite beef stew recipe that I found so far. Our oil and butter is bubbling away, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start breading these little pieces of stew meat in this flour mixture and dropping some in there so it can start frying up. medium now that we're frying. Some of them are starting to get a bit brown. I want them to get nice and golden brown. This batch is looking good and it doesn't have to be fully cooked because it's going to be simmering for a long time in our pot. So we're just going to get these bits out and start browning up the rest. We've got our browned meat in a bowl and we've got some nice crusty stuff on the bottom of our pan. And we're going to get our garlic in here. Our onions and if some carrots go in there it's fine. Now we want the water will release from these veggies and can scrape up some of those brown bits. and we need three cups of beef broth. And I've got my Korean beef powder here. So I'm gonna put a couple spoons of this in here. And I'm gonna put this water. This is two cups and then I'll get some more water. It calls for three cups, but I'm just, I don't, I put what, however much I think looks good. So that's four cups so far. And we're gonna get our meat into here, our stew meat that we browned up, and all the juices. We'll scrape the bottom to get all those nice browned bits up. Now we'll go ahead and get our veggies in there. And 
And I'm gonna add a couple more cups of water. I will link the original recipe in the description box below. We need a quarter cup of tomato paste. So I'm just gonna guess, put in a good dollop. And also I'm gonna show you what I like to do with leftover tomato paste. You know, cause recipes only always call for just a bit of tomato paste and then you always have extra tomato paste left over. So I just get spoonfuls of it and I put it on a parchment paper and I flash freeze these in the freezer. And then the next time that I need some tomato paste, I can just get one of these rounds out of, after they frozen flat on a cookie sheet and they're all the way frozen, then I'll cut these parchment papers where they fit in a quart freezer bag. And then I can just peel off however many of these little rounds I need so I don't have to open up a new can of tomato paste and nothing goes to waste. So I like to do that. And when they're in this flat round shape, they're easy to peel and they thaw really fast and they store in the freezer nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into the freezer. I've got some peas in our stew, but I'm not gonna put it in there yet. It calls for one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I think I'm gonna add two tablespoons because I added extra liquid. We're gonna put, I'm gonna put three bay leaves. They're kind of small, so maybe I'll put four. The recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of rosemary, but I'm just gonna put some in my hand and squish it around and put how much I think looks good. Ooh, the rosemary smells delicious. So we're gonna save our peas for the last minute. That way they don't get overcooked. We've got, I made a heaping cup of peas to stick in there. It's already looking very delicious and smelling really good. So I'll bring you guys in close so you can see how it looks now. tomato paste worked in there. Okay, and now we're gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna give it a stir every now and then, but we're gonna let that sit and simmer for a long time. I almost forgot the celery. Here's some homegrown celery that is from my garden. I chopped up the leaves and the celery and so we're gonna get, it's frozen. We're gonna get some of that into our stew. It, so you need a, two celery ribs. So I'm probably gonna put a half a bag. I almost forgot. <laughs> so we're gonna stir that in. And I'll just be giving this a stir all day and I'll bring you back. Our stew's been simmering for almost three hours, I believe. And now we're gonna fish out all of the bay leaves. I'm 
And there's another one. I have a very full cup of peas. So I'm gonna get those in. I like to put those in at the last because then they don't get over overcooked. We're gonna stir that up. And I checked mine for salt and pepper and I needed to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And my stew is a good viscosity. If yours isn't thick enough, then you can do a two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of cold water and stir it up and then it'll thicken up your soup a bit. But mine's a good thickness, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. And now we're gonna ladle up some soup, some stew. I'm just gonna wipe the side of the bowl off. And here's our delicious hearty beef stew. And now we'll give it a try. It's gonna be really hot. This beef should be very tender in all the veggies. It's so delicious. You guys are gonna love it during these cold months. Some delicious beef stew. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I hope you're having a blessed day and I will see you all next time. Bye. Thank you.